a class of enzyme that can remove acid group from the terminal lysine residue on the histone and non histone protein. Along with histone acid transferase, the two enzymes have the ability to make acylation and deacylation of the lysine residues. Moreover, it has been found that acylation of histone and non histone protein is involved in various circular processes. Therefore, in the, the last 30 years, HDX has been invited as potential targets for treatment of cancer, neurological disease, and immune disorders. For uh, HDX pan inhibitor has been approved by FDA, and uh, one have, was approved in China uh, in 2016. Uh, all the proof of com compound uh, showed uh, the pan and HDX inhibition. Which, uh, which are responsible for, which is responsible for stronger cytotoxicity and uh, has the, the anti uh, proliferation some anti proliferative effect in the cell line. However, it has been found that uh, the the broad inhibition uh, are associated with uh, viral society effect and uh, to uh, toxic re related to toxicity. Therefore, in the last decade, the discovery of uh, isophone selective HDAC inhibitor has become an uh, attractive area in order to uh, identify compound with better selectivity and uh, has lower cell toxicity. Uh, the the HDAC uh, isophone we talk about here uh, requires require a, a zip eye in the bottom of the pocket to catalyze the deacylation as the deacylation. Um, in 11, uh, isophone have been identified and it can be divided into four subgroups. And among them, HDX6 is our major focus. And uh, unlike other isophone, HDX6 is relatively unique because the only isophone has two dentin deacylation, deacylized catalyst domain, named domain 1 and domain 2. Domain is solely recognized peptide substrate containing C terminal acylized residues. On the other hand, domain 2 is mainly the responsible, responsible for deacylating peptides with uh, internal ester uh, interlysin residues such as alpha tubulin and uh, his shock protein 90. Uh, secondly, HDX6 is, is mainly uh, loca uh, located in the, the cytoplasma to deacylate a non histone pro uh, protein. Um, well, in addition, uh, HDX6 it also has a unique protein-protein interaction with other uh, proteins, that, such as the, pro uh, the interaction with tau. Uh, we use the structure of Saha here to expand the, the typical structure of uh, uh, HDX inhibitors. So a typical HDX uh, inhibitor consists of a zinc bonding group, a linker, a connecting group, a connecting unit, and a capping group. Um, the zinc bonding group usually uh, coordinated with the zinc uh, in the bottom of pocket through a bidentate state. The uh, long uh, alkene launch chain as a linker uh, can occupy the hydrophobic chain, no, sorry, the hydrophobic channel, and uh, the capping group usually uh, lay over the uh, uh, the surface to have uh, additional uh, hydrophobic interaction. So um, back to like 2000, uh, 2010, I think, um, the first generation of X, uh, the HDX6 inhibitor was uh, development, developed it, the, the based on the structure of Saha. Um, based on a holomorphic model uh, of HDX6 built up from HDX crystal or HDX8, we can see that the in comparison with HDX1, the entrance of HDX6 is, is about five amstrong larger than HDX1. So based on the idea, the first generation of HDX6 6 inhibitor usually maintain the alkene, uh, the long alkene hydroxymate uh, as Saha, but uh, instead it containing a large and origin capping group to occupy the, the entrance of HDX6 pocket. Uh, two of them have been uh, 
advise the interclinical trial uh, in phase two in, and, and the phase uh, one. Uh, but however, uh, both compounds only uh, display about like tenfold uh, selectivity over uh, HDEC1. And uh, uh, they also show, show the uh, dose dependent cytotoxicity in different type of cancer cells. Uh, after this, uh, they, are, uh, they already have been uh, have a, a second generation of HDX6 inhibitor, which was uh, inspired by the invention of two, the first compound tuberstantin A, uh, that was published in 2010. And uh, in this generation, usually they have a short and a, and a funky uh, phenyl hydroxymate instead of uh, uh, alkyl hydroxymate. And they usually have a, 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 a bicyclic or a tricyclic capping group to occupy the, the surface. Uh, as the, the recent uh, uh, publication of uh, HDX6 co crystal using the Zebrafish uh, HDX6, we have a better understanding about the uh, molecular basis of this type of uh, HDX6 inhibitor. So, firstly, uh, the final ring of the, the link uh, usually is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, sandwiched by two phenyl aniline and, uh, and form uh, double papaxlactin interactions. Uh, secondly, uh, unlike the, uh, uh, the alkene hydro uh, hydroxymate, the, the phenyl hydroxymate usually uh, coordinates with the zinc uh, through a unique water involved uh, monodentate fashion. Second, uh, uh, additionally, the capping group usually is, is positioned uh, against a uh, hydrophobic area we call the L1 loop uh, pocket, which is determined uh, determined by four key uh, residue and and also had been considered as a selectivity uh, determining area. So uh, uh, up to now, it's about uh, the uh, fifty uh, co crystal have been published. And the most of them only uh, display the hydrophobic interaction or pepastic interaction with, between ligand and uh, pocket. But among them, there are several uh, uh, special cases. Uh, we we also observed uh, the random hydrogen uh, bonding interaction with specific uh, residue uh, in the pocket in a cocoa stone. And according to the, the literature, we can know that the, this residue are, are quite important for uh, substrate recognition. So our project uh, was initiated from the idea that uh, if we targeted this uh, specific uh, residue, could we, uh, we identify a new generation of HX6 with uh, highly potent and select, uh, highly potent and, uh, uh, sorry, Highly potent activity and uh, the excellent selectivity. So, um, based on this idea, we select uh, uh, one compound called the next two A using usually next A as our parent compound because this compound has a bachelor capping uh, capping group. In the co-crystal, uh, we know that uh, these these two cap, uh, capping group uh, actually reach out to two pocket. But there's no in, uh, direct interaction with uh, residue, so, so it has the possibility that if we adding uh, the more uh, polar group, it should uh, uh, establish some uh, additional interaction with the residues. The secondly, um, compared to the first generation uh, HDX6 inhibitor, the, the, this compound only uh, is inhibit very weak. Um, Antiproliferative effect in vitro, but in, uh, it show significant anti tumor uh, activity in vivo. And we have uh, for demonstrated that this anti tumor effect uh, is attributed to its immune monitoring effect rather than the direct cytotoxicity. So at the beginning, we use uh, the molecular, uh, molecular the dockings simulation to uh, design one compound we call the super resident and uh, the compound has an additional uh, amino methyl group on the on the phenol cap and have a, a and has a, a, a terminal hydroxyl group on the the builder, uh, builder chain 
from the docking parts, we, we saw that the, the amino group uh, forms a, a sawbridge with the aspartic acid 460. And on the other hand, the hydroxy group uh, has a interaction with the main chain of phenylalanine 643. Uh, furthermore, we also uh, calculate the, uh, the free energy bonding in the pocket. Based on the lower uh, delta G, we know that uh, the compound has a much higher uh, bonding affinity. Furthermore, we also use the, the uh, zebrafish uh, HX6 to investigate the molecular basis of this compound in uh, HX6. So similar to the parent compound next to standing A, uh, we observed uh, we observed that the the phenol uh, phenol ring link is is also positioned between the two phenol aniline. The the phenol uh, the phenol ring capping group also lay over the the L1 pocket. Uh, differently, both uh, bidentate and monodentate uh, coordination uh, zinc, uh, zinc zinc coordination are observed uh, in this co-crystal, and uh, the it should be noted that we observed uh, direct and indirect interaction between the amino group and the uh, aspartic acid 460, and also an, uh, an indirect interaction between the uh, 530 and uh, uh, the hydroxy group. So furthermore, we also use this um, uh, co-crystal to perform the molecular dynamic simulation, and I want to see that because uh, uh, the the butyrin is quite flexible. Is there any chance to interact with other residue? So based on the the, the simulation result, we found that the the hydroxy group also has the ability to to interact with the three five thirty thirty uh, one. And uh, during the one hundred during nanosecond the simulation. And uh, we we can see that the, uh, the the ligand has a higher possibility to interact with uh, three five thirty one. So overall, we uh, we use uh, experimental and uh, computational approach to prove that the additional uh, amino group and the hydroxy group uh, in the capping group of subrestin establish significant hydro bonding interaction with the residue. Aspartic, uh, aspartic acid 460, aspartic 530, and uh, serine 531. Previously, we also we also we have mentioned that these three residue are critical uh, for maintaining the the, uh, the alpha tubulin deacetylation function of H6. So whether uh, uh, interacting uh, the additional in, in interaction with this residue uh, could uh, Improve the HX6 inhibitor uh, activity and the uh, selectivity and the uh, in vivo and the in vitro anti tumor effect. Um, we carry out a lot of uh, bi uh, biological uh, assays. So, from here, uh, my colleague Sadish will um, talk about all this biological uh, assessment we, uh, we've done for this compound. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Thank you for the thank you to Sira for the initial introduction to show the importance of uh, the functional groups, uh, amino methyl group, and the hydroxyl group uh, that were added to the next day to in the design of suprastat. So uh, in this slide, we are going to discuss the. Uh, the role of uh, amino methyl group as well as the hydroxyl group. As you can see that the compound 6A, which is the suprastat, has both the 
amino methyl group and the hydroxyl group, but the 6B has only the amino methyl group, whereas the 6C has just the hydroxyl group. And our uh, base compound, which is in next to restart A, does not have either one of them. So when we look at the inhibitory concentration 50, as well as uh, isoform uh, selectivity, which is uh, indicated as uh, SI, uh, for all these four compounds, you can see that uh, when when we compare the uh, iso uh, when we compare the HDAC6 uh, in HDAC6 activity inhibition when compared to the HDAC6, uh, suprastat is uh, highly specific. When compared to the next A or uh, 6B or 6C, uh, where the inhibition compared to the where inhibition of uh, HDAC6 when compared to the class 1 uh, HDAC, HDAC 123 is in the orders of uh, 293, 440, and 800s, uh, whereas the inhibition of uh, class 4 HDAC, which is uh, HDAC 11, is, uh, is, in, is much uh, superior compared to the HDAC6 inhibition. So, uh, based, on this, uh, based on this data, we can, and also the specificity index is, uh, is, is, quite, is quite high. Uh, for the HDAC6 inhibitor, uh, for the HDAC6 specific inhibition. So we uh, we further uh, went ahead and treated the uh, WM164 uh, human melanoma cells, uh, which is uh, which bear the BRAF, uh, BRAF V600E mutation, which is pretty common in the human melanoma patients. So when we treated these uh, when we treated these cells with an increasing concentration of uh, uh, suprastat uh, compound 6B, 6C, as well as next day. We expect to see that uh, since this is a HDAC6 specific inhibition, and uh, as Sida mentioned before, uh, HDAC6 is unique in a, in a way that it is uh, localized to the cytoplasm due to the presence of those two nuclear export sequences. And uh, you would expect to see acetylation, hyperacetylation of uh, uh, a hyperacetylation of cytoplasmic proteins such as uh, tubulin when you inhibit HDAC6. However, we would uh, expect to see no effect on the acetylation of uh, nuclear proteins such as, in this case, uh, we are looking at a histone H3. And uh, to do this uh, immunoblot analysis, we use uh, Azure Biosystems uh, C600 imager, uh, which was a uh, uh, which is uh, very, uh, which is which was very helpful for us to look at both the acetylation as well as the total protein, uh, which were probed at uh, using two different antibodies and uh, probed on two different channels, and to make the com to make the comparison, uh, to make the comparison, all the a Western blots where all the blots were exposed at this under under one single exposure. So this is a really big advantage for us because uh, of using the C600 imager because uh, we were able to uh, quantify acetyl tubulin, tubulin, acetyl histone H3, and the total uh, histone H3 under single exposure. So as expected, you can see that. Uh, with the suprastat, we see a, a dose-dependent increase in the acetylation of uh, tubulin because we are inhibiting the HDAC6. And uh, you can see that uh, there is a very faint increase in the acetylation of histone H3. When compared to the compound 6B, uh, there is a significant increase in the acetylation of histone H3. So in this slide, we are just uh, quantifying the, the bands that were uh, from the immunoblots. And uh, the quantification uh, reveals that uh, the red bars, which are uh, specific for the suprastat, it, it it shows a, a linear uh, increase in the with the increase in the concentration for the acetylation of uh, tubulin. In the panel F, uh, which is quantification of uh, histone H3 acetylation, uh, the red bars indicate the effect of suprastat, uh, where the, where the histone H3 is acetylated only at the higher concentrations. Uh, so based on this data, we can say that uh, uh, tubulin acetylation as a readout for the HDAC6 specificity with suprastat is significantly higher when compared to the other, mole other molecules, uh, showing that uh, 
the functional groups, which are the amino methyl group as well as hydroxyl group, uh, does increase the isoform specificity. So, however, we need to look at the uh, the cytotoxicity of these uh, HDEC inhibitors as well. Historically, the HDEC inhibitors uh, were used as uh, uh, anti-tumor agents, uh, specifically for their uh, cytotoxic effects. Uh, however, uh, it is very difficult to understand because of their uh, pan HDEC inhibition, as well as uh, even for the class one HDEC inhibition, which in, which uh, which inhibits uh, class uh, HDEC one, two, and three. We cannot really; it it becomes really difficult to assess uh, which uh, the cytotoxic effects are contributed from which particular HDEC inhibition. So, for this uh, particular reason. Uh, we we developed this compound suprastat to specifically inhibit uh, HDEC6, and uh, we noticed that uh, the HDEC6 inhibition is not having cytotoxic effects, which uh, which is a, which is a, which is the benefit of using this compound, which affects uh, which means that uh, HDEC6 inhibition does not affect the normal cells compared to the tumor cells. And uh, so, in this uh, cytotoxicity assay, we can you can clearly see that uh, the suprastat, which is indicated by the orange uh, orange line, has very minimal cytotoxic effect, even at uh, concentrations as high as uh, twenty five micromolars. So, so you you, you might be thinking that uh, how how if if the HDAC six inhibition does not uh, have a cytotoxic effect, uh, mm -hmm. how does it how does it even uh, help in uh, suppressing the tumors? So we have published a couple of papers uh, showing that uh, HDAC6 inhibition actually possesses uh, significant immunomodulatory effects rather than cytotoxic effects. And we used uh, we demonstrated this activity using uh, SM1 murine melanoma model as well as a murine 41 triple negative breast cancer model. These are uh, syngenic mouse models, uh, which means that uh, they retain the active immune system. So these models are really good models to study immunotherapy. And when we use the Nextura stat in combination with the uh, anti-PD-1 therapy for both the SM1 murine melanoma as well as the 4D1 cancer, you can see that the, the combination therapy significantly suppresses the tumor growth when compared to single arm therapies, which is uh, either next day or, uh, or the anti-PD-1. And uh, when you compare to the control group, uh, in all the three treatment groups, uh, the, the tumor growth is significantly suppressed. However, the combination has the, the most uh, significant effect compared to the other groups. So now we know that uh, HDAC6 actually, uh, HDAC6 inhibition has some immunomodulatory properties. So I want to give you a brief introduction to how the, uh, the anti-tumor immunity works. Uh, usually, the tumor cells are the tumors are uh, are uh, infiltrated with uh, antigen presenting cells such as uh, dendritic cells or even macrophages, uh, where they process the tumor antigens and they are processed and they are presented to the T cells through MHC1 uh, receptor to the uh, TCR receptor on the T cells, and the core receptor such as CD8086. On the antigen presenting cells, stabilize the interaction with the uh, CD28, and this is the signal two. Uh, the antigen presentation is a signal one, and finally, these uh, antigen presenting cells uh, pres uh, express some pro-inflammatory cytokines, uh, which further activate uh, and function as a signal three, uh, leading to the complete activation of CD8 T cells uh, that possess that now possess uh, antigen specific. Uh, anti-tumor immunity. So, uh, however, the tumor cells counteract the uh, CD8 T cell mediated immunity by expressing uh, suppressive immunosuppressive molecules such as uh, PDL1 or even uh, expressing some uh, anti-inflammatory cytokines that will dampen the T cell mediated anti-tumor immunity. So this is the defense mechanism employed by the tumor cells to counteract the T cell mediated immunity. So we have previously shown that uh, HDAC6 along with uh, interacts with the uh, STAT3. So when uh, JAK-STAT pathway is activated by cytokines such as IL-10 
IL6. It, it phosphorylates STAT3 and HDAC6 when interacts with phosphorylated STAT3 protects the phosphorylation status from being dephosphorylated by phosphatases such as, phosphatase such as PP2A. So this will result in uh, increased translocation of uh, STAT3 to the nucleus, which leads to STAT3 mediated uh, transcription of uh, immunosuppressive molecules such as uh, IL-10 and uh, PDL1, which is uh, so we did a uh, we did a qPCR analysis uh, using bone marrow derived macrophages that were treated with uh, IL-6. In combination with IL-6 and next day in combination with IL-6, as you can see that uh, uh, the panels A and B are qPCR data showing that uh, uh, inhibition with just the suprastat alone decreases the gene transcription of uh, IL-6 and uh, PDL1, which is uh, which is also represented as CD274 here. The panel C is a Western blood. Again, we perform this uh, uh, these immunoblood analysis using the Azure Biosystems uh, C600 uh, imager. Uh, we were able to see that uh, uh, when when treated with uh, IL-6 uh, for 15 minutes, uh, which results in uh, phosphorylation of uh, STAT3. However, when treated with uh, suprastat, or uh, next day, the phosphorylation decreases. So this will result in uh, decreased nuclear translocation of STAT3, and that will result in decreased gene expression of IL-10 and uh, PDL1. So we were also able to verify a dose-dependent uh, increase in the acetylation of uh, uh, tubulin uh, using raw macrophages. Uh, we we did we did this uh, to just show that uh, the anti-tumor effects. Uh, uh, the immunomodulatory effects on the immune cells on, as well as the tumor cells uh, is the same when we treat them with uh, uh, the suprastat. So uh, we went ahead and uh, uh, we tested the SM1 murine melanoma model uh, with the suprastat, uh, anti-PD-1, and a combination of suprastat plus anti-PD-1 therapy. So the unique, uh, the unique, uh, the uniqueness of our uh, SM1 murine melanoma model is that uh, we use a in vivo to in vivo passaged uh, SM1 SM1 melanoma cells. The benefit of using this uh, in vivo to in vivo passage is that we retain the ability of uh, the melanoma cells to uh, react to the immune responses. Uh, whereas most of the uh, most of these uh, mouse models, they use the cells uh, from they were cultured in the plates, so the the gene transcription is being rewired when they are not exposed to these uh, immune responses, and uh, when we in, when we use these uh, uh, cells that are cultured in dishes uh, in the cell culture plates that are implanted into the uh, into the mice. They don't. Uh, they don't uh, reflect the the actual immune responses as compared to the model that we are using, where we use the in vivo to in vivo passage. So, as you can see in the panel A, uh, the the line represented by uh, the line represented in green is the suprastat plus uh, anti PD one therapy combination, which is uh, which has a significant uh, uh, tumor suppressor function as compared to the a suprastat or anti PD one single arm therapies, and uh, all these three therapy uh, arms are uh, significantly uh, have a significantly lower tumor volumes compared to the control group. The panel B just shows the individual uh, uh, growth curves for the for the tumors. So, uh, since we see the uh, since we see that uh, the suprastat uh, functions. Uh, uh, better uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, suppressing the tumor. We wanted to evaluate the, uh, we performed the ADME studies uh, where we assess the stability of the compounds, uh, both the suprastat and next day in uh, PBS, as well as uh, simulated gastric fluids, uh, human plasma stability, and uh, even the using the rat liver microsomes. As you can see that uh, most of the properties are comparable between uh, suprastat as well as next day. 
However, the human plasma binding uh, ability for the suprastat is significantly lower compared to the next day. Because of addition of this uh, hydroxyl group and uh, amino methyl group, it decreases the uh, the it increases the hydrophilicity, whereas the suprastat is uh, very highly uh, hydrophobic, and this makes the availability bioavailability of uh, suprastat uh, much better when compared to the next day. So we 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 speculate that uh, the enhanced uh, activity of uh, suprastat is because of uh, more availability of the compound to perform its uh, immunomodulatory functions compared to the next day and not only that when we compared the tumor growth curves uh, with the uh, suprastat as well as uh, next day to attain the similar uh, 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 tumor suppressor function with the next day at 26 days you could actually see the same effect at uh, as early as 19 days with suprastat. So uh, in 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 all the perspectives uh, uh, with regards to the isoform specificity, with regards to the uh, the plasma low plasma binding ability, and and also uh, the ability to suppress the uh, the tumors uh, using the SM1 melanoma model, suprastat is uh, is significantly superior when compared to the next uh, when compared to next day so we collected the the tumors from the sm1 murine melanoma model and we performed an immune cell phenotype uh, immune cell phenotyping using uh, flow cytometry we have previously shown that when we suppress uh, hdx6 uh, when we suppress the hdx6 activity in these uh, murine melanoma models uh, in these murine uh, uh, melanoma tumors it does not affect the M1 macrophage, but it does affect the M2 macrophages. M1 macrophages are uh, anti-inflammatory. Uh, uh, M1 macrophages are pro-inflammatory and anti-tumor macrophages, which uh, which uh, increases the anti-tumor activity, uh, which increases the anti-tumor immunity. Whereas M2 macrophages, they are anti-inflammatory and they are pro-tumor. And they secrete factors that increase the that enhance the tumor growth, as well as increase the metastasis of the tumors. So, uh, despite uh, suprastat and next day not having any effect on the M1 macrophages, we see that uh, it significantly decreases the M2 macrophages, thereby resulting in an increase in the ratio of M1 to M2. So the M1 to M2 is now being used as a clinical parameter to assess the immune status of a tumor, uh, where an increase in the M1 M2 ratio of uh, either anti uh, after immunotherapy, if you see an increase in the M1 M2 ratio, it in it, it indicates that uh, the tumor the tumor is more uh, is more inflamed as well as uh, it is uh, it it is having an anti tumor uh, properties. So we we also see that uh, uh, with uh, with when treated with uh, suprastat or in combination with uh, anti PD one therapy, it increases it significantly increases the number of uh, CD eight effector T cells, and it is also very well known that anti PD one therapy increases the numbers of uh, CD eight T cells, and not only that we were able to see that uh, just the suprastat alone increases the CD eight central memory cells, and uh, it increased the all the three arms of therapy increased the effector memory cells for the CD8 uh, for the CD8 T cells. Uh, despite of uh, significant uh, increases in the CD8 T cells, we did not observe any different uh, any any differences uh, with the CD4 cells as well as uh, T Rex. Uh, however, we see an increase in the NK cells. Uh, but we do see a significant decrease in the NK T cells. Uh, we speculate that uh, this decrease in the NK T cells is because we see an increase in the CD8 T cells and the, in the CD8 effector T cells. So to summarize the the study so far, the molecular docking studies, X-ray crystallography, the molecular dynamic simulation. All these uh, provide a strong evidence that addition of uh, amino methyl as well as hydroxyl functional groups to the capping group of suprastat significantly increases the hydrogen bonding interaction between the capping group and the amino acid residues, uh, which include 
aspartic acid 460 aspartic 530 and serine 531 due to this uh, hydrogen bonding interaction it increases the suprastat's uh, ability to selectively inhibit hdax6 at a significantly lower concentrations which means that uh, suprastat is a better uh, hdax6 inhibitor with a with high potency and super selectivity for the hdax6 furthermore uh, we were able to show that uh, uh, hdax6 inhibition with suprastat decreases the immunosuppressive expression of immunosuppressive molecules such as uh, il10 and uh, pdl1 and the in vivo studies using the sm1 murine melanoma model further demonstrated that uh, the tumor suppressor activity of hdax6 inhibition in combination with uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors is due to decrease in the uh, numbers of uh, uh, pro tumoral m2 macrophages and increased uh, infiltration of anti tumor cd8 t cells and memory cd8 t cells and thank you for your attention so far